Hello everyone. I just recently picked up this bench grinder on Craigslist. It's an old um, Dayton Industrial from 1985, an eight inch grinder. And I actually got the um, Baldor stand with it. This whole thing was 40 bucks, which is a screaming deal. Uh, but the only downside to this, it doesn't really have any light on it. It doesn't have like a lamp or anything. So in this video, I'm going to incorporate some LEDs directly into these eye shields so I can get some light directly on where I'm working. So let's go take a look at these shields themselves and how I'm gonna retrofit some LEDs into them. The grinder has these really nice eye shields. It's actually a piece of glass and it's laminated, so there's a um, piece of plastic in between it too, which is kind of nice. And you know, they're nice and adjustable. I'm gonna need to do something different with this screw. I do not like it, but it is a nice little eye shield. What I noticed is on the back of this right here and right here, there's a nice kind of flat space. So I was thinking about using one of these um, one watt Cobb LEDs. Cobb stands for chip on board. It's basically a diode on a PCB and it has a nice little aluminum backer. You can get these pretty much anywhere. I have a link down below on Amazon, but you can get these in a one watt or three watt variety. And I think one, one watt per side is gonna be plenty of light. And the nice thing is you should be able to just aim it exactly where you want to go. So that's the plan. So here is a better view of the eye shield or eye guard when it is taken off. That is the front side and this is the back side. And you can see that I've got these two little flat spots as I mentioned before. So the idea is to take a couple of these LEDs, slap them on like that, and that is pretty much all there is to it. But I'm gonna do a little bit more fancy than that. I could just take some thermal epoxy and just kind of glue these down and be done. But like I said, I wanna go a little bit fancier. And so I turned to the 3D printer and made these two little uh, adapter plates. These will hold the LEDs in place. I can actually screw them into the eye shield. And I don't know, it's just cleaner. The epoxy probably would have worked just fine. Um, the way these work is it has this little recess here, which you might be able to see on camera. That corresponds with the little lip on the lens. So if I line it up like that, it should just kind of snap into place. So now it's held firmly in there. And then we just have to drill two holes. And then I'm going to be using brass heat set inserts on the 3D print. They're basically just these little inserts that you melt directly into the print. And then we have some nice threads that we can attach to. Now for the um, people that are looking at this and thinking like, hey, this is a thermoplastic, it's gonna melt, things like that. I did um, think about that and I did test this. These little standoffs right here, these little nubs do stand off from the metal. So there is no heat transfer into those. Obviously the brass inserts are kind of isolated, so no heat transfers into those. And we're actually pressing against the lens. I don't know if you can see that, but we're not actually touching any of the PCB or any of the hot bits. And this will be just transmitting its heat directly into the frame of the eye shield. I did do a test on this with two of these running after an hour. I went from 70 degrees up to 73 degrees. It was absolutely negligible. And so if we just kind of snap our fingers, here is the finished piece. We've got the um, two LEDs mounted in place, not wired up yet, but we just have the four screw holes right there and nice and mounted. And that's what the heat set inserts look like. So nice and simple. So now that we have the LEDs mechanically mounted, we need to get some power into this so that they can light up. For this, we're going to be using a constant current LED driver. A constant current LED driver is quite simply a power supply, but instead of supplying a constant voltage, so think about like a 12 volt power supply, it's supplying 12 volts. This actually provides constant current and the voltage fluctuates depending on the load. So we have these little LEDs and an LED will draw basically as much current as you can provide it. So if we give it I don't know, half an amp or something like that, it will light up and as it heats up, it actually draws more and more current and then it will eventually just die and you know go away. So what we need to do is we need to control the amount of current. There's two different ways we can do that. We can actually have current limiting resistors, which will limit the amount of current going in, or we can use something like this, which is a constant current LED driver. It will provide a constant amount of current. And in this case, this is 300 milliamps. So that means that these LEDs will never get more than 300 milliamps worth of current. And we don't need to worry about uh, resistors or anything like that. Now, the interesting thing to note about a driver like this is you can connect multiple LEDs, you just need to connect them in series. So here's what I mean. So this connects into it like that. We've got the positive lead going to the positive. Then we jump the negative 
over to the positive and then the negative back. Very similarly to how you connect um, you know, with batteries in series or whatever. So this series connection allows us to string multiple of these in line and that whole string will always get 300 milliamps, 300 milliamps, 300 milliamps and so on and the voltage will actually fluctuate so that we can properly drive these. So that is kind of the um, simple way of explaining a constant current LED driver. I figured I'd do a little sped up montage just to kind of show you how all this went together. I used a little bit of thermal compound on the back of the LED uh, PCB just to give um, some better thermal transfer between that and the frame of the eye shield. Just a little bit is all you need here and it just kind of held it in place for the soldering. So once that was kind of um, held in place, I just kind of delicately soldered everything together, making sure the wires were routed around in the right place in between that clip that was in the middle. Once those were in place, I just uh, took the little 3D printed pieces, set them over top, and then screwed them to the frame. Nice and simple. I did end up using Loctite here for a couple different reasons. One, there's gonna be some vibration, so having some thread locker on there is a good idea. But secondly, because the little um, 3D printed frame sits up from the shield a little bit, if you tighten it really tight, it's going to bend and bow and deform that. So you actually don't really want to tighten it all the way. So hence the thread locker will keep those in place because these screws aren't exactly going to be tight. From here, it was just a matter of cleaning up the wires a little bit. I used a zip tie just to have some strain relief to keep the wires from pulling out. And then finally used a piece of heat shrink that I slid down the arm of the eye shield just to keep everything nice and tidy. So I've got both of these wired up and it is nice and clean, but let's turn it on just to make sure that everything works. And this will give you a good idea on how bright one of these can be. Um, for the power, I've just kind of got a power cord going into this mess and then directly into the power supply. And I've got the clip on the other side. So nice and simple just for testing. So just plug that in. And then I got to plug in the power cord. And so that is what it looks like. Let me see if I can kind of get a better view. Yeah, there you go. So that's what it looks like on camera. It's actually quite a bit of light. Um, my shop already has a lot of light in it. I have like 100,000 lumens in here, but this is actually a substantial amount of light and it really lights up what's in front of it. So that's exactly what I was looking for. So the last thing to do is get the electronics all together for this. I'm using this little 3D printed box that I made and it has the two switches on the front. I've got holes in the side to go out into um, these guys. And then inside I have one, two, three magnets. And then there's a radius cut on this. So this will just kind of sit right on top of the bench grinder and then I'll have my switches right on top. And then I have my two power supplies and all the other wiring and stuff like that inside. I'm using two of these because I wanna be able to control these independently. There's really no reason for that. I'm just kind of getting fancy at this point, but this will give me ability to control the left and the right side independently. And this is just the prototype. I have the real one printing on the printer right now. So as soon as that's done, I'm gonna swap out all the electronics, get this soldered up, and then we can throw this on top of the bench grinder and test it out. So here it is, everything is hooked up. I've got the box on the top and once again, it's just held in place by magnets. You can see all the gorgeous wire maintenance inside there and it just kind of snaps on. It actually holds in place pretty good and you kind of slide up, slide it back. Um, it's really not going anywhere, it's fine. And then you can turn these on and turn these off. So it's pretty simple. And um, I actually added some plastic knobs here. So now you can much more easily adjust all of this just without getting the screwdriver. And the wire goes through that channel and then just goes back into the box. And then the power cord just connects in the back. So yeah, that's all there is to it. Um, let's go ahead and um, I'll turn off the light so I can give you an idea just how bright these things are without any light on in the shop. You can kind of get an idea. There's a fair amount of light coming off of these. So here's what it looks like without a single light on in my shop. Just to give you an idea, there's nothing going on inside here. So yeah, there's a fair amount of light that comes off of these. And as you can see right behind it, it is 
just gobs of light. It is more than I'm ever going to need. So pretty happy with that. And it's only two watts. These things won't really get hot. They're not going to draw much power. So yeah, pretty happy with how that turned out. Overall, I'm reasonably happy with how this turned out. I'm doing this different angle just so you can see the wire kind of coming through and the wire maintenance. Um, I think maybe if I had to do all over again, I might have just put the switches down here and built the whole thing into the stand. But I do kind of like having it up here. And the reason I didn't do it down below is because the wires would be traveling all around and you'd actually see a lot more of the wires. So I don't know, give or take, there's pros and cons to anything. Um, functionality wise, I give it a solid A minus. Um, I think it does exactly what I want want it to do. It's plenty bright and I can get the light exactly where I need. And maybe aesthetics gets like a C plus. It's a little clunky looking and it's maybe not as ergonomic as it could be, but overall I think it'll work just fine. So um, as always, thanks for watching. Check out my Facebook page for any updates to my channel and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks again.